I would like to start with the practical here and quickly show how to install the membrane and uh, what details to look out for. The membrane itself is 1.5 meter wide and it means that most of the time you would install it crosswise to any studs or rafters. There's uh, some markings on it and they all make sense and they're all rather important. Uh, you see a continuous line here along and the continuous line is 10 centimeter and that's the minimum overlap that you should have if you install it crosswise to a, to a timber structure. Then you have the dotted line and the dotted line is about 30 mil from the edge and the tapes are 60 mil. Means this is basically your tape line. So if you follow the dotted line, the joint between the membranes is in the middle of the tape and that's the perfect uh, position for it. Um, a couple of years ago the, the dotted line wasn't on the membranes. You know, they were just, um, just well, there was no guide. And when they introduced the dotted line, I thought, oh, that's a bit Mickey Mouse, like everybody can follow a joint. But I got so used to it that I once got a membrane with a misprint and I was like sheepishly following the dotted line even though I was way off the joint. It really speeds up the process and it's uh, handy. Between the two big marks we have a meter. Between the big mark and the medium mark we have half a meter. And between the small marks we have 10 centimeters. So there's no need to have a ruler or a measure tape or anything on the ground. So once you know what length you're looking for, you can basically just count it down from the roll. And I need about two meter here, so I just check where I am. So that would be one meter, and two past the medium again would be. So that's the medium mark, that would be two meter here. On a building site, best really is uh, to keep the membrane off the ground so that it doesn't get damaged by any pebble or concrete or stone or anything that deep is. And um, even better would be to have it in a box so that you can cut it off square. There's nothing more annoying than a membrane that is slightly off angle and you use the longer side for a start and only when you're almost finished uh, realize that the bottom is actually too short and you have to take it off again or fix it. Again, I mentioned it on the window, I'll pick a point, right, left, doesn't matter, fix one side first and then pull it across. Now, when you pull the membrane, it's important to just pull it firm. If you pull it too hard, you will see it kind of bulges upwards. It gives a bulge at the top, and that means you get a crease at the bottom. If you don't pull it hard enough, you get creases straight away. So somewhere in between, just a firm, easy pull with your hand. Left, right, opposite, middle. And the two corners. And then again, I stand back, you know, check if I'm happy with it, pull it a bit here. Put it a bit there. Bit. Now, the staples are minimum 10 millimeter in length and uh, 8 millimeter <coughs> in length and 10 millimeter wide. And um, if you use a hand stapler, um, you're tempted to use the stud or the rafter as a counter pressure for pulling the trigger like that. It's definitely easier than holding it and do it like that. But I would always recommend to have the staple in the same direction as your structure, your timber, your stud, your rafter, whatever you're fixing the membrane onto. 
because if you do a test, an air tightness test, or if you blow in insulation like cellulose insulation or blow in wood fiber insulation, anything like the pressure, the membrane will always bulge out that way. And if the staple is crosswise, it's just the tip of the staple holding the membrane, and it's, it's rather easy to tear. While if the staple is about the same direction as the timber, it's the full kind of length of the staple holding the membrane. Now and then, <coughs> don't get carried away stapling. There's a pipe here in the way. So whatever obstructions you have, whatever comes your way, a, pi a pipe, a, a, a timber, a joist, anything, uh, don't just staple, 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 and then like, ooh, sugar, what now? Because now, if you staple too far, you have to make a long, nasty cut to get around it. So just check it before you get there. And whether you exit or cut around, um, both is fine. I like to just cut around. And once you're happy, you start to fill in the staples. If there's insulation in already, it's uh, four inch, ten centimeters. If you have blown insulation like wood fiber or cellulose, it's two inch, five centimeters. You don't have to measure it, but like in it around that. <coughs> if you do a small project or your own living room, hand stapler is fine. As soon as you do a bit more, definitely invest in an electric battery or a pneumatic stapler. Otherwise you have an arm like, like that in the <laughs> evening. Like. Most mistakes that I see on site are rather simple, simple mistakes. It's really not rocket science, it's easy and straightforward if you stick to a couple of rules. If you tape an overlap, you start somewhere and then you follow the membrane with the tape, if that makes sense. So, you know, you, you bring it in and you go bit by bit. And over time, you get faster and faster. <coughs> now you got a hang of it, you want to speed up. So you pull the tape, remove the liner, you're pulling here, and you just lap it down. Okay, I exaggerate a bit. And what happens then is you can get those pockets in the membrane. <coughs> Because you're not following the membrane, but you, pu you, you pull the tape over it and flap it on. And especially if the membrane has a bit of slack or, or creases, you get pockets there. And I see that over and over and over again. And it's so easy to avoid, like, you know, by basically, as I said, just, just follow the actual line of the, of the membrane. And that's it. By the way, the press fix is not only to give a good bond, it's also to protect you from injury. If, um, if you staple the way and you do a lot of square meters and you use your hand, the hand actually gets hot. You can get blisters, but the worst is if you have a staple that broke off or isn't, isn't fully in and you go over it with speed and it cuts the hand, you know, all the way through. I'm guilty of doing it. I've done it twice, <laughs> and that's it. Um, <coughs> so that's so far so easy. For corners, there's again, there's kind of little, little um, details that you can use while you install the membrane. Like, it's technically not wrong to stop the membrane in the corner. 
and tape in the corner. You can do that, but it just takes more time and makes it a bit more complicated because you have to tape in the corner. So taping in the corner means again you should bring the tape straight in and not leave it not leave it hollow or roundish. So to avoid this I like to bring the membrane just a little bit further out, a little bit over the corner, like two inch or something, and staple it down to the next stud here. If needed, trim off the excess. And then you can actually just tape it straight down like a normal overlap. You know, and you, you don't have to be as careful as taping it in the corner. Um, small things that make a difference when you're installing it every day. Some people ask me, why don't you just go over the corner, you know, into the corner and just continue on. You can do it, but in my experience, Snyder said that air tightness is a denominator for the quality of a build. More often than not, if I, if I get to the corner and continue on, the corners aren't actually straight. You know, they're slightly off angle, the one or the other way, and it means when I start here, I either go off this way or that way, and um, I just got used to stop there, start again, pull the next line. The way with the triangle, we do it with big pieces, eight, 10 meters. We do it on the ceiling, we do it upside down, like you could start at the two bottom and pull it up. It doesn't matter left, right, um, upside down, it's always the same uh, yeah, pattern rhythm. <coughs> Other installers snap a line, like a chalk line, or even set up a laser. You know, whatever works best for you, really. Then we come to pipes and cables. And by far the easiest way to deal with it is to use the grommets. There's EPDM grommets and they cover any diameter from a single cable to something like 450 mil. And um, it's as easy as that. <coughs> In each pack you get the grommets with the tape, so there's no need to buy extra tape for installing grommets. Make sure that the edge of the pipe is not sharp or cutting into the grommet. Especially like metal pipes cut with an angle grinder, they tend to be like razor sharp. And just pull it over. Use the tape that's supplied with it. and you tape the grommet back to the membrane and again about 50-50. So half the tape on the grommet, half the tape on the membrane. And again don't forget to give it a good push. That's it. There's no need to glue tape or do anything here in between the pipe. Um, the, the real, another advantage, it's really fast, it looks neat, it's airtight. Uh, another advantage is you can still move the pipe. You know, if there's any need for pulling it out, pushing it in or twisting it, um, it just moves in there, no problem. But what do you do if uh, if I arrive on site, the pipe comes out here but disappears in the ground or in the ceiling or anywhere, I can't use the grommet anymore. So I have to do something different. 
And if I was a plumber or an electrician, I had a box of grommets with me all the time. And just while you install the pipe, pull the grommet over, continue on, pipe disappears, leave it there for the air tightness installer. It takes you literally 10 seconds. You make like three, four pound on it. But like for 10 seconds, that's not bad, isn't it? And um, it's still cheaper and better for the client than getting someone like me coming after. Because the next way of doing it would be to tape the pipe. And that is the width of a tape at once is one step. So I'm cutting down little strips of tape and I go around like that. Now, it's a correct, it's technically correct, it works, it's airtight. Um, but I would, I actually would have to charge more for taping it than for using a grommet. Could you cut the grommet? Could you cut the grommet and go over the top? You cannot. It's one, it's, it's one limitation of the grommet. If you cut it, um, you couldn't bring it back together. And the, the force on it is, is too, you know, it's too strong for the tape. Okay. So over time it would come off. So far there is no retrofit grommet as far as I know. Yeah. But, I mean, you can tape it. It's not the end of the world. It just takes time. Okay, you get the idea. Um, cables or smaller penetrations are even easier. You get a, a car flex, it's called. And it's a grommet, again, with the EB, EPDM rubber. But it has the, you know, the, the tape is on it already, the sticky part. So really all you do is take it off. We have a cable here. Bring it over the cable. <coughs> Don't forget the blue plastic press fix give it a good rub and that's it dropped on. Yeah.